It is important to see how the shift from the paradigm based on debt changes to one of equity. Change always occurs from people questioning the dominant model. They are the innovators that ask why instead of how. These radical thinkers likely do not benefit from the current paradigm and look to offer an alternative way to live. Our current paradigm is ruled by the Anglo-American elite that empower themselves by spreading debt and death throughout the world. They create unlimited debt-based money out of thin air to build the world's largest military empire, to secure the world's resources, for their corporations to harvest, to create profits, to buy the politicians, to rig the game in their favor, and further consolidate power to the top, both here and abroad. That is how the Anglo-American criminal elite have garnered so much power over the past 300 years. But this has left a huge scar across many of the world's nations, and people are starting to wise up to this racket. At the turn of this past century, the Anglo-American hegemon stood on top of the world as the lone hyperpower. The Anglo-American elite sought to further consolidate power into what they called full-spectrum dominance. They set out to dominate the rest of the world's resources, while there was no formidable challenger to stop them. Their goal was quite simple become so powerful on so many levels that no single nation can possibly defy or even challenge that hyperpower. The rest of the world stood by over the past decade as the United States pounced all over the Middle East looking for more oil and securing the petrodollar. Invasions, bombings, uprisings, interventions, and the U.S. used everything in its bag of tricks to divide and wink in power in the center of the energy production in the Middle East. This recent excursion of power is really not much different than the past 300 years of the Anglo-American Empire. While no one nation could possibly challenge the United States, a radical concept arises from a group of nations that could become an anti-hegemon of sorts and challenge the hyperpower. The most radical notion of all is to topple this hyperpower without a violent conflict. Nations like China, Russia, India, Brazil, Iran, Venezuela are starting to recognize the combined power that they have. These early adopters were set about establishing the intellectual foundation of something new. More importantly, they could topple the American paper tiger without even firing a single bullet. This economic war could be won through extracting wealth out of the current economic order, through trade deficits and buying up of assets, and the energy dependence of the West, all the while creating their own paradigm where they could exclude the West from even more powerful markets that they are developing. The anti-hegemon does not have much in historically or culturally in common, but the mutual frustration of the Anglo-American empire. Right now there is a comfortable dismissal from the current Anglo-American empire propaganda that will talk down to the anti-hegemon saying that they have nothing in common. But this Anglo-American propaganda will totally miss the point, will totally miss the very powerful bond these nations do feel, in that they no longer will be pushed around by those that spread debt and death. Well, at least not debt and death with the English accent. Young men make wars, and the virtues of war are the virtues of young men. Courage and hope for the future. Then old men make the peace. And the vices of peace are the vices of old men, mistrust and caution. It must be so. No longer will they beg at the seat of power at the UN, or the IMF, or the World Bank, or be held hostage by the SWIFT system. Even the current Chinese purchase of the London Metals Exchange pushes this idea further. This anti-hegemon will go about creating their own power systems that will benefit themselves, and it will act as an umbrella to other nations that do not currently benefit off the Anglo-American debt and death paradigm. It will be very easy for the anti-hegemon to offer support to other nations and cover from the Anglo-American empire, much like how they have clearly drawn the line in the sand with Syria and Iran. This will force the Anglo-American empire into the resistance zone, where the rhetoric will be amplified and the chess pieces will start moving faster. Mr. President, the United States is disgusted that a couple members of this council continue to prevent us from fulfilling our sole purpose here, addressing an ever-deepening crisis in Syria and a growing threat to regional peace and security. For months, this council has been held hostage 
by a couple members. These members stand behind empty arguments and individual interests while delaying and seeking to strip bare any text that would pressure Assad to change his actions. This intransigence is even more shameful when you consider that at least one of these members continues to deliver weapons to Assad. The United States has long said that it's past time that this council assumed its responsibilities and imposed tough targeted sanctions. What the Anglo-American power will find is that things that worked in the past will fail and fail badly. The anti-hegemon will be moving their wealth out of the debt paradigm into the real wealth paradigm through massive gold, commodity, exchange, and land purchases. Once the anti-hegemon has extracted as much wealth outside of the debt and death paradigm, they will pull out and focus their productive capital and efforts inside their own paradigm that they control. Since most of the world's population, resources, and energy is inside this grand chessboard, the Anglo-Americans will once again find themselves outside looking in.